Good morning. I'm Kevin Cotter, and I wanted to give you a little bit of insight into how I put a sermon together. And uh, first off, when I begin studying any passage, I consult the online Bible. Online Bible is not online. Uh, the online Bible program began before there was too much uh, internet, and they've never changed the name of it. Uh, the online Bible actually is on your computer. It is a downloaded program, and it is a very powerful program for Bible study. It's free, and it does everything that a $900 Bible program will do just about. It's very powerful. There are all kinds of books hooked to it. Uh, there are all kinds of dictionaries, all kinds of scholarship hooked to it. And uh, the, the main program is free. There are some modules you can buy uh, to add on. If you want a newer version of Scripture, you can get the American Standard, uh, excuse me, the New American Standard. You can get the American Standard for free, but the New American Standard, I think it costs $5.00. Or you can get the New King James, if you like that, and that's a few bucks, or the New Revised Standard. Uh, most of the Bibles, and I think there's probably nearly 50 or 60 of them that are free. But of course, if, uh, if people are making a new version, it, that's costly, and so therefore it must be sold. But the problem is, uh, itself uh, is solved because everything besides the new ones are free. And if you don't have an extra $5 to, to get the new American standard, um, you probably don't have enough money to have a computer to do this anyway. So I want to give you uh, a little bit of insight. This coming Sunday, today is April 29th, uh, 2024, and this coming Sunday, our, uh, in our rotation, we are on uh, Luke chapter 16. We've been going through the book of Luke. And we've come to this point. And so I'm going to just look at the first two verses of the scripture and show you uh, how I meditate on it, how I think about it using the online Bible. Now, the online Bible is not the only thing that I use, but it is a major, a major part, and it's where I start. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you a little bit of a... Uh, a, a uh, PowerPoint, and then uh, I'll come back here and, and speak to you directly. So I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to go over to the PowerPoint. And uh, I hope you can see that all right. And we're going to run, run this uh, slideshow from the beginning. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, please subscribe. Uh, that helps with the algorithm. And that will give this more views. I hope this is helpful. Uh, please comment. Uh, you can uh, you can write to me, or you can uh, you can go to our website if you don't mind donating to our website. You know the church pays for me to do these things, and so if you don't mind throwing in a buck or two, uh, that can be done on the church website. I'll give you the website later. Uh, so this is how I study using the online Bible. Uh, particularly in this week, Luke chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Now, here's the, the, uh, the website for online Bible. You can see from the uh, arrow, the yellow arrow at the top, the, the website is HTTPS, online Bible, one word, dot net. And when you go there, uh, you will have to download the basic starter pack, and that will give you uh, some dictionaries. It'll give you the King James Version, and uh, it'll get you started. It's all you need to get started. It's absolutely uh, free. I recommend it to everybody. The, the people that put this together really did it, uh, you know, years and years and years of work uh, for free so that you can have this opportunity. So now I'm going to switch to uh, online Bible itself and uh, show you how it works just basically. Uh, as you can hear, the clock is going off. It's nine o'clock in the morning here in Cheshire, New York. Let's see here, where is it? Here it is.
things a little out of kilter here. Now, what this does is there's a lot. It's a very powerful program. You can, if you know what verse you want, you can just click on here. You can choose whatever book or verse you want to look at. In this case, we're looking at Luke chapter 16, verse 1. I've already put it in the window over here to the right uh, so as not to waste time. Oh, no, I should have. It went back to the beginning. So I'll just show you how it works. Luke chapter 16, verse 1. I'm choosing the New American Standard uh, 95 Bible. So there it is. So he was saying to his disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and this manager, if you'll notice, the second manager is in italics. And what that means is, is that the translator supplied that word based on the context of the sentence. So literally it reads, he had a manager and reported to him as squandering his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give account of your management for you can no longer be manager. Now, <clears throat> when I set up the online Bible, I, I picked five versions, AV, which means authorized version. That's the King James version. <clears throat> And so we see that in the King James Version, the manager is um, translated steward. And so in English, there is, a, there is a bit of a difference between manager and steward. And so we'll see how it's translated in the New American Standard 95. <clears throat> it's translated manager. In the New King's, King James Version, it is translated steward after basically after the same manner as the, the King James Version. The New Revised Standard, excuse me while I itch my eye here, uh, <clears throat> it's manager, and in the Young's literal translation, it's translated steward. So these are the two verses that we're going to be looking at. <clears throat> so I'm going to go over to the New American Standard 95, and I'm going to hit this little button right here. And this is going to give me the original word in Greek. So I just click on that. And we find the word manager. There's this number with it. And all I'm going to do is click it. And over here in this window, it will give the definition. It's oikonomos in Greek. It's from two words. It's from... 3624, which means house, and 3551, which means anything established. And so we see here in the King James Version, it's translated steward eight times, Chamberlain one time, and governor one time. And so this is somebody uh, that we, if we put this in 21st century, uh, understanding it would read there was a man who had a power of attorney and he was reported to the person who gave him that power of attorney as squandering his possessions so we see it's a, a highly trusted person a person that could do what they wanted and and that they couldn't be held responsible for what they did except they could be removed from the stewardship and so that's exactly what's about to happen to this man so we have down here, this is a Greek-English uh, dictionary. This is the New American Standard uh, Greek Dictionary. I have these three loaded. Manager, manager, steward, stewards, and in one case, it's translated into English as treasurer. So you get to choose which dictionaries you want. You get to choose which Bible versions you want. Of course, uh, the New American Standard, the New King James, and the New Revised, uh, they have a small fee because they're copyrighted. I think New American Standard is five. Uh, New Revised Standard is 15, I believe. I don't remember what I paid for the New King James Version. So here we have this person who's squandering uh, money that he's supposed to be uh, using. He's supposed to have a fiduciary responsibility on how he uses this money, and it, it turns out that he's being uh, frivolous with it. 
And so what does the word squandering mean? So we just double click on that and we see that it's a, it's a word uh, that means to winnow. And in, in the old days, when they would bring the wheat into the barn, after they would harvest it, they would let an animal walk over the uh, wheat and it would separate the wheat from the chaff, the little uh, outside inedible part of the wheat plant. And then they would have a winnowing barn where they would take a winnowing fork, which is kind of like a pitchfork, and they would the, the prevailing wind would come through there, and he would throw throw the the grain up, and the wind would blow the chaff away. And so this is the word that is used for how this manager is spending his boss's money. And so he's not doing a good job. And so Jesus is about to tell a story about this guy. And if you want to uh, know more about that, then uh, go to cheshire-church.com after next week, and the full sermon will be there, and I'll talk about that. So as we get started, this is where I start. Now, down here in this particular um, window, I have commentaries. And there again, there are a hundred different commentaries that you can choose from. But these particular commentaries are good. They're all in the public domain, so that means they're old. And uh, but they're you know truth is truth in the 15th century as as well as in the 21st century. And so uh, the I'm going to explain the difference between these. But uh, and when I get back to the PowerPoint, but we have Barnes what he had to say about it. We have Clark what he had to say about it. John Gill, this is the most exhaustive of the old, um, the old commentaries. Uh, Jacob uh, Jacobson, uh, maybe it's not Jacobson. JFB, uh, that's three men. Lightfoot, Lightfoot is wonderful because uh, he was a Hebrew scholar and he understood the rabbinic writings and how the the writings of the rabbis uh, interacted with what Jesus was teaching. And so, in in this case, uh, there's it's quite a bit on, on stewardship. Uh, we have Matthew Henry and uh, John Poole and uh, Ryle's Gospels. These are all available. Uh, each, If there's a verse there on in one of these books, uh, it will show up. See, there's, there's, less, there's less on that one than there is on this one. So I'm going to close this down a little bit and uh, get back to... Uh, the PowerPoint and talk about these different people that are are there in the uh, in the online Bible. So, of course, that is interfering. Oh no, I've lost my cursor. Oh, there it is. So the first one is Albert Barnes. Uh, he's an American. He was born right over here in Rome, which is not too far from Canandaigua. And uh, he wrote a Bible commentary in 14 volumes. He, he lived between 1798 and 1870. And so Barnes is really a, a good uh, evangelical. They're all, they're all good evangelical commentaries. And then we have Adam Clark. Uh, he was a Methodist. He was the second, basically the second bishop of the Meth uh, Methodist Church. He followed Thomas Koch, who was the founder of the Methodist Church, and he uh, lived between 1822, or excuse me, he was in office between 1822 and 1823, and he died in 1832 at the age of 70. And then we have John Gill. He's a Baptist. A biblical scholar, and he was Calvinist, and so he had some ideas that I don't agree with at all. Uh, there's there's two schools of thought concerning uh, Jacob Arminius and John Calvin, and I I kind of follow the other the other line of thinking, but it's a very good commentary, and I understand that when he says some things, I just don't agree with it. But uh, he has a lot of really good information, good insight aside from that. Uh, uh, Jameson uh, Fawcett Brown, 
uh, three different people. I could only find the picture of David Brown, uh, but uh, they were from the Church of Scotland, which is Presbyterian Church, and then uh, Fawcett was Anglican, which is Episcopal, the Church of England, and then David Brown was interesting in that he was not a pastor. Uh, he was just a um, a Bible scholar. And most of these people that I have on the uh, online Bible that I have set up are pastors because what I do is pastoral. And so all my interpretation of whatever the Bible says has to be framed in such a way that it can uh, influence the lives of people in the 21st century. Uh, somebody that isn't a pastor doesn't have that, uh, you know, they don't look at the Bible pastorally. And so they just look at it uh, critically, maybe. Now we have John Lightfoot. He's the guy I mentioned that is the the um, Hebrew scholar. He was also British. And uh, during the time that he lived, the Jews were not allowed to live in in England. And so he had all these rabbinic studies. He knew more about ancient Judaism than probably anybody alive. And uh, it's, it's really interesting, some of the insights that he brings to the teachings of Jesus. And so if there's a, if there's a comment by him, then I always look at it. Then we have uh, Matthew Henry. He's very famous. Uh, he's a little bit earlier. He's born in 1662. Uh, he was a nonconformist uh, British guy, which meant that he <clears throat> he didn't want anything to do with the Church of England. And so he, he interpreted things maybe a little bit different than the Anglicans did. So I have him in there as well. And then Matthew Poole, also a nonconformist theologian and biblical commentator. And so uh, this is way back in the day also. And the last one, which I really like, is uh, Charles Ryle. Uh, he was a evangelical Anglican or Episcopalian bishop in England. He he didn't have much use for the ceremony. He had more use for uh, what the Bible said about everyday life, and I like that about him. He's very pastoral, and he uh, he's very scholarly, critical as well, <clears throat> and he shows uh, he he <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit. He, he shows where he got his information from. He documents things like a, like a modern scholar, uh, where he got the thought from. So I really appreciate him as well. Now, I don't want you to think that this is all I use when I do my studying. I just want to mention that I do have uh, more uh, current scholarship, and this is my uh, reference library. So I, I have all these other things that I refer to as well. Uh, they range from Catholic to uh to heretic. Uh, uh, this this one is really an interesting group. Uh, they they have different people with different uh, understandings of Christianity, and so you get to it's called the Interpreter's Bible. It was put out in the 1950s, and you can pick up a complete set of those for about 50 bucks or 75 dollars. So I have these more more current things that I consult as well, but they can't be in the online Bible because they're they're just not available. The, the ability to pay the copyright just isn't there. So if you want to uh, get to the sermon that I, that I just looked at, you can go to cheshirechurch.com, click on sermons, and it will be, um, it will be listed under uh, Luke chapter 16. So that's what I use. I recommend it for anybody that is doing a uh, serious Bible study. If you want to know what the original words mean, and if you want to know what the critics of the Bible say about a passage, and if you want to know how the passage is used pastorally, and if you want to know how it fits into the understanding of the first century rabbis uh, in the Jewish culture in which the New Testament was written, uh, these things are all available uh, free in the online Bible. So I just thought I'd mention that. May God bless you. Uh, if you don't mind subscribing, that helps me with the algorithm. 
And uh, if you don't mind sharing this with somebody else so that they can uh, download this free program and use it as well, uh, I would appreciate that too. God bless. Have a good one. And we'll see you next time.